Today we have the speakers with us, Dr. Asman, Dr. Sharina, and Dr. Maisara, who will be elaborating further into this program. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us today. And if you have any questions, please don't, hesi don't hesitate to leave them in the chat box. Okay, so before we dwell deeper into health toxicology, let's know more about the details of this program. And for that, we welcome the program coordinator for this course, Dr. Sharina. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Julia, for your kind introduction. Um, welcome to our webinar for introduction of our uh, Master's Science in Health Toxicology. Um, um, let me share first my slide. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, a bit of technical problem. Okay, so um, basically, um, we are today. We are here today to introduce to all of you Master of Science in Health Toxicology, or we call it as a TMT program. It is under the Integrative Medicine Cluster in AMDI, uh, Advanced Medical and Dental Institute, or uh, if you translate it in Malay, it is Institut Perubatan dan Pergigian Termaju IPPT. If you confuse between these two names, you can use both actually. Okay, so actually, um, uh, this is our uh, building in the picture here. This is the clinical part. Back part, we have uh, animal research facility. And for the academic um, and administrative one, we have another building in um, near the P, uh, uh, IPD, Kepala Batas. So uh, it's not very far. Um, it's in IPP, uh, in uh, Kepala Batas also. Okay. So let me start with the introduction of the program. Oh, seems. There's a problem with my slide. Okay, uh, you can see my slide? Is yes, it... yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so um, before we, uh, before I start with the contents and everything, um, I just want to highlight why do you need to choose our program to uh, continue your master's degree? Okay, so why do you choose the MT? Uh, master's Science in Health Toxicology is a brainchild program of AMD and also National Poison Center USM, and it has been started since the year 2010. Okay, this is one of a kind program to be offered in Malaysia so far, and this program is designed to produce. Uh, scientists that is competent in health toxicology field, specifically in clinical, environmental, and occupational toxicology. Okay, and the students will also get to experience a hands-on research in our state-of-the-art research facility, alongside with experts in this field. Okay, and Dr. Azman, after this, will go through our experts we have in integrative medicine cluster. Okay, and um, of course, when we want uh, to choose a uh, an academic program to continue our study, we have to make sure that it is accredited by MQA. So this program is accredited by MQA, and within one year, you can graduate uh, and get your scroll if everything completed. Okay. So the program structure for uh, this Master of Science in Health Toxicology uh, this is a one-year program, which consists of uh, two long semesters and one sem uh, short semester. Okay, So um, it is a mixed mode program because it has formal taught courses, plus uh, it has research dissertation part. So if you uh, like to do research and you want to enhance your knowledge, uh, this is the perfect course for you to take. Okay, now um, I will introduce you to the cost structure for this Master of Science in Health Toxicology. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, it consists of three semesters. 
um, two long semesters and for the third semester, it's actually a short semester. Okay. So for this intake, um, it will start on 12 October to 2020 until the 21st March to 2021. Okay. So um, uh, during the first semester, students must complete uh, these modules. Okay. The first module, Environmental and Occupational Toxicology, uh, this is actually an introductory part of the whole program. So in this module, you will learn basically about the different types of toxicants, um, how it affects the environment, um, how uh, these toxicants uh, affect uh, uh, the human and etc. Okay. And then another, uh, the second module is research and professional skills. For the research and professional skills, this is actually um, uh, combined with uh, other program in ITPT as well. Uh, this is under the medical research uh, program. Um, and in this module, uh, you, can, you will learn about um, the skills you need to continue research work, how to do a proper proposal, proposal writing, um, how to defend, um, and et cetera. Okay. And then the third one is clerk sheet in poison control. For this clerk sheet, students um, will have to go to the National Poison Center and um, they will have to experience, they will experience how um, National Poison Center deals with poisoning cases and how they um, do management of these cases. Okay. And then the last part of the semester is research. It will, uh, it, it actually, um, uh, in the research part, uh, during the earlier uh, semester, uh, it's actually for you to discuss with the supervisors uh, the topics you want to do. And also, um, it's actually you can uh, choose which topic you like and which supervisor you like, which after this, Dr. Azman will uh, show you our experts, and then you can choose uh, from there. Okay. And um, in the research part, towards the end of the semester, uh, hopefully you have started to do your uh, research project, okay, and then continue in the second semester. Okay. In the second semester, uh, this is the modules you have to complete, okay, and the clinical toxicology, okay, in this uh, module, it's actually uh, more on the clinical part, the clinical management, if uh, if uh, anything happened, okay. And then the second module is concepts in management of hazmat incidents. Okay, for this uh, second module is more on the management if an incident happened, what, what should we do? The decontamination process, um, the hazmat team, uh, the PPE needed and etc. Okay, and then uh, continue by clerk sheet in clinical toxicology. For this clerk sheet, Students will go to Hospital Kepala Batas to get um, to get to experience how um, the medical team responds to the um, poisoning patients. Okay, and um, the last part is research. Okay, continue your research project during the second semester, and hopefully after uh, before the end of the semester, the project um, is completed, and then continue to writing up your dissertation thesis and submit your dissertation in the third semester and also you will have to uh, have to sit for viva voce and then um, submit your full thesis and after that you have you have finished your master's program uh, so it's only in one year you can finish everything and um, now you are uh, you are graduated from this program. So the total credit unit uh, for this program is 40 units. Yeah, the formal thought courses is 20 units and research dissertation 20 units. And you can see it is 50% of each part. That's why it is called as a mixed mode program. So after you have finished um, doing this master's program, the career pathway that you can embark, it, embark is uh, you can be a clinical scientist in health-related field. 
You also can be a scientist or researchers in health-related departments, in hospitals and industries. Or you can also be a health risk assessor in health-related departments and industries. And also, if you, uh, you're thinking of pursuing your uh, study until PhD, so this is yeah. the program for you to uh, take first. Uh, sorry, please mute your uh, microphone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so um, uh, if you um, like research, to do research, and you you think like um, it's not easy actually, uh, after you finish your Bachelor of Science, and then you continue your research, because research uh, minimum uh, years to for you to complete is two years, but um, usually it will take longer. So if you take um, this mixed mode program, uh, you will have the opportunity to do research also. You, ha you have your uh, research project. And also, uh, you can learn something, uh, new infos on the health toxicology part also. Okay. So, uh, what's the requirement if you want to, um, to continue with us? The admission requirement. Um, you have to have a Bachelor of Science in areas related to health sciences biomedical science or any relevant sciences, or you have a medical degree from local or other recognized international universities. So as long as you have a bachelor that is related to health sciences, there is no problem. So, <clears throat> so this is just to share with you our teaching faculty our lecturers okay um we are um bit of young lecturers but uh actually we have senior ones also and um we are very eager to meet you actually we welcome you and come and see us here um and uh, i think it will be a good experience for us and for you also so we welcome you to join our program and um, sorry, the transition is a bit slow. Okay, now I want to share the teaching and learning activities of our students. Okay, um, we have a small group teaching and learning. Actually, this is um, this is good because you can have a one on one and one on one discussion with uh, our lecturers. Okay, and um, actually, in when you are um, when you are doing a master's program, or we, I can say postgraduate programs, um, it's not um, the same teaching and learning as what you have in your uh, during your bachelor's degree. Okay, during this postgraduate program, it's a two-way communication. Um, we will give you info, and um, we welcome, we very welcome um, any discussion and. Um, you know, you can discuss with us. Um, there's no right or wrong. Um, it's always a two-way two -way, uh, discussion with the uh, lecturers and also the supervisors. Okay? And also, uh, we have AMDI learning space uh, here so that students can, um, can have a rest after class or you want to do your work here. Um, and also, um, we have clerkship in hospital, as I mentioned, in hospital Kepala Batas. Okay, so this is um, our students during the clerkship. Actually, this is the introduction uh, during the intro, the brief introduction to the student. Okay. And then uh, this one, um, it is actually in the National Poison Center. Uh, you can see our uh, lecturer from National Poison Center, Dr. Azalia, is uh, actually teaching the students, but it seems it seems like it's a discussion, right? So, uh, as I mentioned, this is not like uh, your ordinary teaching in class, you just hear for lectures, okay? We always welcome uh, discussion in our class, okay? So, um, also, we have many uh, modules that um, need you to present um, your thoughts, uh, present your 
your knowledge and everything. So uh, this is the chance for you to develop your presentation and communication skills. Okay? And um, what I've experienced before, um, during the first semester, the students will be quite hesitant to present. And um, after, the, after they finish the first semester, and in the second semester, usually they started to feel um, the difference. They're willing to present, they're willing to discuss their thoughts and everything. Yeah? And also, um, I would like to highlight about our lab facilities. Um, we have state-of-the-art lab facilities here in IPPT. So um, if you come here, uh, join our program, and of course, uh, after one year, you can, can continue your PhD. So uh, during your master's program, you can, uh, uh, can know uh, or go through our labs and go through our experts to know uh, who to go for for your PhD, okay? So if you have any um, questions, you can ask us now, or you can personally uh, email me uh, at this email, charlina at usm.my, or call me, and you please follow us on Facebook, MNC Health Toxicology, IPPT, USM. Uh, let me, that's the end from me. But before I stop my session, I see here we have um, uh, Nurfatin Akila. Hello, Fatin. <laughs> we have students that uh, asked me pre previously. So I welcome you to this session. Hopefully, this session will give info to you and others also. I can see um, several names here. So um, feel free to ask because um, this is uh, but this is not uh, usual things to do. So uh, you can just ask uh, by chat at the chat box, or you can personally ask me. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, maybe Miss Julia can take the session. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sharina, for that clear introduction. Is are there any questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, if not, then we can proceed and watch a video of IPPT at a glance. So please bear with me as I share. The Advanced Medical and Dental Institute EMDI, University Science Malaysia is devoted towards developing the latest in advanced research. The implementation of innovative postgraduate programs, the delivery of tertiary health services for human sustainability. Being part of University Science Malaysia, ANDI strives to move forward in line with the status of excellence achieved by USM. As USM moves to develop the higher education sector in this country, AMDI2 will move along to utter, enhance and create innovative and relevant graduate programs in specific areas to meet the needs at the global level. Recognizing the need for future leaders who can pave the way for the development of this country, AMDI offers various postgraduate programs, masters and PhD, including mixed mode courses. AMDI produces research and clinicians who are not only capable of producing drugs or therapies that can be commercialized in the future, but experts in the health sciences who are knowledgeable, committed, and creative. AMDI offers an advanced postgraduate degree program, Master of Science, Master of Medicine, and PhD specialized in medicine. Therefore, AMDI has taken steps to create a postgraduate medical program in a critical area. In line with the development of AMDI, Clinical Services is now in operation at the Clinical Research Complex located at Bertam, Kepala, Batask, Nang. With the intention of becoming a major referral center that provides the latest health care services and promoting a healthy lifestyle, 
AMDI is used as a referral center for oncology services covering the northern region of Peninsular Malaysia, more emphasized in the field of oncology and is now receiving cancer patients for full treatment here. The field of research at AMDI is one of the three main causes part of its development. In developing this field, AMDI provides the latest research facilities to provide quality health care through the exploration of novel methods with great commercial value. With the support from the six clusters, research in AMDI plays an important role to disseminate research findings in the form of presentations and publications to generate more knowledge. University seeks mutually beneficial relationships with communities in addressing communities' issues and needs. The Advanced Medical and Dental Institute has taken proactive approaches in networking and partnering with industry and community. In accordance with the motto, we build and lead excellence, AMDI will always remain relevant and will develop to become a leading institution in the region, in tandem with its vision to lead the world with new innovative breakthroughs and delivering holistic and sustainable health services. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty video. And now moving forward, let's go deeper into what health toxicology actually is about. And for that, we welcome Dr. Asman, who has been a USM lecturer since 2008. His main uh, research area is in cancer chemo prevention and molecular toxicopathology. <coughs> He's produced more than 30 postgraduate students and has won several international awards. For that, we welcome Dr. Asman. Yeah, thank you, Julia. Um... Assalamu alaikum uh, and welcome everyone to our special program today for our Master uh, of Health Toxicology program in FPT at USM. Let me share the next slide here. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? Okay. So for today, I will, I wish to share with you a little bit info of uh, what all about regarding fundamental of health toxicology, and um, I will share also two of my uh, PhD students' work before, as to you know to make uh, hopefully everyone can understand much more better what is fundamental of health toxicology all about. So as we know, uh, formally, uh, by all this time, uh, the sorry, um, uh, toxicology be known as science of poison, but uh, at current moment at this time, the science it be known as a science that deal with the adverse effect of chemicals on the living organism and, and access to the probability of their occurrence. So this is by definition what the toxicology is all about. Um, hello, sorry, doctor. I think the connection is a bit 
disturbed. We can't really hear what you're saying. Okay, okay, maybe now, maybe come back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now it's better. Now better? Yes. Ah, now better. Okay. Okay. Do you see my slide here? Yes, can see your slides. Okay. Right. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. I'm not sure what you call it, but. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, uh, so that's the definition of it. But regarding the toxicants, uh, where the roots of the environment often mix, um, uh, you know, and and it cause so many things to us. So this we have to understand very well the fundamental of it because in environment or whatever we are fully surrounding with a toxicant everywhere. So this toxicology is very interesting because we want to know uh, what actually happened and how they, you know, interact with us and how it uh, cause many kind of disease. So just before we go on with the fundamental, I share here the cases in Malaysia, uh, uh, the cause of uh, hospitalization due to poisons uh, with the, uh, the, the data from the Ministry of Health. Uh, this is the, the, the statistic data were prepared by Dr. Schneider and also uh, Dr. Rusmaidi. So and what we've seen here, the poisons uh, cases is a lot. Uh, so it's highly percentage everywhere, uh, not only in private hospital, as well in not only in government hospital, but as, as well in a private hospital. So uh, it's very interesting uh, regarding this toxicology and also fascinating, uh, fascinating science that uh, which make the biology and also chemistry interesting and relevant. Um, and the most important is that how we should understand the mechanism of it, how this toxic effect can lead to the new ways and how we can, if we know that particular mechanism, then we can treat, we can prevent much more better. Normally, we use animal models or in cell line model or even the clinical sample. And many disease are a result uh, of the interaction between our genetics and also the chemical in our environment. And um, of course, toxicology will provide an interesting and also exciting way to apply science and also important problem of our social and also environment and public health uh, significance. Is it okay? Um, the slides stuck. Is it? Yeah, I think the slide is stuck. Okay. Maybe it takes some time to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have not shown the full screen. Yes. Okay. Is, is it okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, regarding the discipline of toxicology, uh, I'm sharing here a few of uh, display. Uh, first of all, is mechanistic toxicology, where the we know we want to study how a chemical causes the toxic effect by investigating the absorption, distribution, and also uh, excretion. Here in in IPPT. Uh, there's uh, actually many lecturers about we have about 20 more lecturers involved in this uh, toxicology research uh, what i'm showing here a few of them uh, with the mechanistic toxicology is dr narani and also dr adeline is very uh, expert in this particular area we have a uh, descriptive toxicology where dr era and dr hasni they are very well known regarding the toxic properties and for clinical toxicology is uh, Dr. Isaifo, 
who are head of our cluster and also with Dr. Yusmaidi. They are very well trained in the clinical psychology and they have a lot of research interesting topic that maybe we can uh, discuss with them later. Um, <clears throat> then also we have also forensic toxicology where Dr. Usnaida and also Dr. Ui uh, who are very, very keen or interested in this particular uh, research area where Dr. Usnaida is uh, actually is a uh, who are very good in anatomy, but she also have a keen in toxicology research, where Dr. Ui is a more on nanotoxicology. And Dr. Lim is a chemist, and Dr. Shalina as well. They are very, uh, you know, they are very keen to know regarding the environment of toxicology. And we have our lovely Dr. Jahangir, who are very expert, well-known in the standard Malaysia. Uh, he's a uh, uh, really, you know, uh, love to do this regulatory toxicology. Uh, so what we, we have all the experts here in IPPT. And myself and we have another about four or five lecturers who are working on toxicopathology. What is toxicopathology? Toxicopathology is uh, the primarily, uh, primarily deals with the morphology or structure effects of a toxicant and the mechanism by which the structure effect is uh, induced. So it can be, we can use a cell line or we can use an animal model. And we have uh, also Dr. Moslina, Dr. Chazani, Dr. Siti uh, Nazmi, and also Dr. Nohuda. So they are very well trained and they know this research very well. I think you can go through our website for more details. Uh, here today, uh, I wish to share with you uh, the research regarding this fundamental toxicology. As we know, our environment here today, uh, also in our country, is, is good, but in some locality, in some area, we have problems, as I show in this slide, okay? Mm, do we understand very well what is going on with our environment? Uh, do we affect really in our, you know, in our genetics? Uh, condition. Uh, so this is the fundamental of toxicology where we want to move on. Like here in Malaysia, we have issue, many issues with our environment, uh, both seed, uh, exercise and, and so on. So we want to, you know, to know how it related to our clinical condition. So here I wish, uh, I am sharing uh, uh, the, what you call, one of my project uh, my student before, uh, Dr. Nazmin. Dr. Nazmin now is a lecturer in uh, IPPT uh, together with us here. So what she done, she studied is that uh, how to, to, to investigate the protein or the genes that uh, involve uh, due to the changing of the cells. So in this study, what we do, we're using a normal prostate cell line, um, WPE. We try to transform it into a cancer condition by using uh, HIP. HIP is a heterocyclic way. It's a carcinogen in the food. Mm. We are taking a lot of uh, satay uh, all this time uh, and also red cooked meat. So here, actually, the HCA is, can be found in our red cooked meat, okay? So uh, there's about more than 20 chemicals uh, when being categorized as a heterocyclic amine. And PHIP is one of them. So what Dr. Nazmi have done is that try to induce this chemical into this normal cell and try to transform it into a cancer cell. So this is what we have done. Uh, I just try to uh, make it into simple. Uh, to make everyone understand. What we are looking is that what are the genes, what are the proteins that been triggered, that been modified through this uh, mechanism. So she tried to work to, to, to induce the cell, become a cancer cell first. As you can see, the cell proliferation rate is already increased and the colony formation of the uh, cancer cell being, you know, being found here. As, as you can see in the slide. So then we try to study the protein through a few analyses. And at the end, we found that uh, a few related protein uh, due to this uh, PHIP uh, that 
change or transform the cell. Uh, inshallah, we're going to further on. I think that the city is going to further this in animal model to confirm how the protein uh, interact uh, with these uh, uh, issues. Uh, the second one, uh, there's another project uh, with my student, uh, Dr. Balagun from Nigeria. He's uh, been sponsored by TWAS. So what we uh, do is that we try to use uh, earthworm. Earthworm is a uh, is a uh, invertebrate that live in the soil for more than twelve years. The lifespan is twelve years. So you can imagine how this uh, you know all the toxicants is in the soil, uh, all the uh, bacteria or whatever you name it. All the poison is in the soil, but the earthworm can you know can have a lifespan for about 12 years so we are very eager to know how this uh, insect or how this uh, worm can you know can stay for that long term so what we did we tried to challenge the earthworm uh, with the again with heterocyclic amine hip and also meiqx so we serve this particular chemicals to the earthworm for certain duration and we study uh, the histopathology, the SEM, and also the proteomics analysis. So this is the uh, body wall of the outside of the earthworm where we using the uh, SEM, and we see, uh, as you can see, this is a normal, uh, the one without any uh, exposed to the chemicals. But this one with the PHIP and this one with the MEIQX. So you can see how the wall be, you know, be there, and there's a lot of modification done there, uh, as well in the muscle tissue, also, you know, uh, been, uh, broken, and also we using the TEM, we see how about the cells inside the uh, particular tissue. Uh, there's a lot of modification uh, interaction with the drugs. Uh, and also the histopathology is also showing uh, a negative side of it uh, where the body wall is not in a proper condition. As you can see, it is a control and these are the hydros of PHIP. So then uh, we tried to investigate the proteins involved and we found there is a seven uh, protein being induced, uh, you know, being showing the expression very well. Uh, specifically in this particular model. So we got whatever the name of this particular protein and we know how to, you know, to go on with it. And it's a good information for us to further on and make it, make it use as a, a new biomarker in our future study. So uh, toxicology is complex science based on the principle of dose and response. It's just based on those and respond, but still a very complex, but very interesting. Uh, and also the environmental exposure further adds to this uh, complexity. And uh, the focus more on minimizing the hazard by designing a safer chemicals. That is our target. How we can live in our in a good environment. And we need a green chemistry. So-called a green chemistry is really important. Here in IPPT, we have two lecturers in our group. Uh, Dr. Fatima and also Dr. Nadira, where they are so very well expert in uh, produce uh, what you call as a green chemistry. If you want to know details, you can contact them through our website. You can get their details and uh, they have very interesting topic to move on with this uh, to achieve a good environment. Okay. So I think you should uh, know what is your role and uh, together with us here, although we have a risk as part of our everyday life and one decision as to the acceptability of a particular risk in, is influenced by uh, the knowledge. We can try to increase uh, the public's knowledge about the risk and benefit of all things uh, regarding this chemical. So uh, we need you actually. Okay, we really need you. You have to play a critical role in this effort and we can't do it without you. So please come and join us, help us here and not only us, but you know, help our nation to, you know, to have a good life uh, with a good uh, environment.
So with that, uh, thank you very much. And if you want to know more details, you can feel free to contact me through my email. And you can go to our website and to gain more information. Uh, I think with that, thank you and open to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asman, for that comprehensive explanation. If there's any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat now of whatever we've talked about so far. Okay, if not, let's proceed to know about uh, how important it is to know about heart toxicology. And for that, we welcome Dr. Maisara, who's actually also one of the alumni from this program. She completed her PhD in environmental health, where she studied the effectiveness of regulatory restrictions applied to control pesticide exposure among urban population in South Australia. So let's welcome Dr. Maisara. Sorry, Doctor. I think you are muted still. Sorry. Thank you. Hi. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Julia, for the brief introduction. Um, I just want to say that I'm very honored to be given this opportunity to share with everyone here on uh, the top uh, of what I think of the importance of health toxicology. Uh, first of all, let me share my content. Uh, All right, um, um, let's begin the presentation. Um, before uh, the question, the, the first question that I want you guys to think about is that how, do what, how many there are um, chemicals that are registered for use out there? Like just how many, like, okay, so, Truthfully, we don't know really, but I found a paper in, that was published in January. It says that there are over 350,000 3, chemicals and mixtures of chemicals have been registered. Uh, and this is actually um, three times more than it was previously reported. And this 350,000 chemicals is only from 22 chemical inventories from 19 countries and regions. Um, they are many pub, uh, chemicals that, are, that remain publicly unknown because they are claimed as confidential and or ambiguously described. All right, uh, as uh, probably have, you guys remember what Dr. Azman said, um, we right now we have a global problems uh, with regards to environmental chemical contaminants one of it is that uh, environmental chemical component contaminants is detected in our food uh, some chemicals uh, that are detected in our food uh, includes metals uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon persistent organic pollutants uh, perforinated compound pharmaceutical and personal care products, radioactive elements, plastic, and so on and so forth. So I think most, one may ask, uh, so what if you are exposed to chem these chemicals in our day-to-day -day lives? Um, well, uh, in that paper, uh, we found, I, I read that paper and uh, some example of possible human uh, health hazard uh, with regards to the exposure to these environmental chemical contaminants uh, are as follows. Um, lead, uh, which is a metal that found in water, it has been associated with gastric cancer. Uh, benzopyrene, uh, which is usually found in barbecued food, uh, is, has been associated with uh, cancer. Uh, Chlorpyrifos, uh, one, of, uh, one of pesticide, is found in food also and has been uh, associated with neurological toxic effects. Um, and next, uh, PCBs, uh, also found in food, also has been associated with neurological disorders. And finally, arsenic, uh, which is found in drinking water, uh, is, uh, has been associated with skin cancer. So what is toxicology? As previously mentioned by Dr. Azman, it's a field of study that helps, helps under, help us understand the adverse effect of chemicals and substances on human, animal, and the environment. This is just the general 
uh, uh, definition. So uh, I want to take you to the general process of a chemical approval in a country or company. Um, I guess we may ask how can a chemical or a substance um, be introduced in the environment? Um, for your information, this is just a general process of uh, pre uh, chemical approval. Uh, first of all, the chemicals should be first proposed. Uh, during this proposal, uh, there should be a risk assessment going on by the scientists or even the authority. And, uh, and then um, during this assessment, uh, there should be uh, identification of the hazard and risk of this chemical. And there also should be um, uh, what, uh, there should be the likelihood of the risk to be in fact uh, to be impacted to the public or human or animal or even environment. And finally, there should be some uh, risk management proposed uh, in order to decrease uh, the likelihood of uh, the health effect of this chemical to the human or animal environment. Okay. Um, uh, if the authority, uh, let's say the, usually the government or in a company, this should be uh, and this should be a department that look look at this uh, thing. Uh, if they think that the risk is minimized, uh, then can minimize uh, the chemical is approved will be approved for use during the usage uh, to ensure that uh, the environment. Uh, the environment and the worker who are exposed to this chemical or even the public who are exposed to this chemical uh, have, have very minimized uh, risk of the effect of this chemical. Uh, this chemical is monitored in environment, workers, uh, even the population, uh, ideally. Okay, that's not what happening actually. <laughs> ideally, it should be that way. Okay, and finally, um, and, and, and next, they during the usage during the usage of this chemical there's somewhere out there there's there's some researcher or scientist has been doing research on this chemical so at that time there may be the new emergence of scientific information they that got a question again is it still safe to use this is it really safe to use this chemical so at that time the chemical usually uh, will be undergoing a review or undergoing a reconsideration. Okay, after that, if everything is passed by the authority or the, the related person, the chemical is approved again with new control measure. Okay, that's the general process. Well, I guess the question now, how does the knowledge of health toxicology assist our day-to-day -day life? All right, uh, to answer that question, I would like to give you an example of a pesticide, uh, which is called Pyrifos, that has been approved and is currently under review in Australia. Uh, I talk about Australia because that's what the, that was my research was about. I researched about Pyrifos usage in Australia, so that's why I talk about Australia today. Um, all right, uh, a brief introduction of Pyrifos. Uh, Corporifat is an organophosphorus pesticide, um, um, specifically in, it's mainly used for insecticides. Uh, it is registered for use in over 100 countries worldwide. Um, it was first introduced for a non-agricultural market in 1965, and later it was introduced to agricultural market in 1970. At that time, uh, Corporifat was a cheap uh, effective pesticide that replaces uh, DDT. Uh, it was banned at the time. Okay, Scoprifos is currently under review in Australia. Uh, and it also may have been banned in some countries. Uh, it's, so, uh, it's also under review in Thailand, Singapore, and in Europe. All right, what, does, what are the adverse effects of Scoprifos? Exposures to this pesticide, high level, I, I miss, uh, will, will, will induce all of this neurological system, uh, symptom. Okay, um, if you were to drink um, an amount of this pesticide, you may experience the signs and symptoms. But um, for low level chronic exposure, uh, for example, you are, if we are exposed 
through dietary route or we, if you are exposed from the garden, um, uh, that we, we call that as low-level chronic exposure. Uh, for this kind of exposure to chlorpyrifos, um, uh, the epidemiology, ep epidemiology studies shown that um, exposure to chlorpyrifos has, um, uh, there were significant decrease of birth weight and decrease of head circumference among infants observed after exposure to chlorpyrifos during gestation period. Uh, there are also negative neural development outcome have been reported in children uh, during exposure to chlorpyrifos, even in childhood or during when the mother was pregnant with the infant, uh, such as childhood trauma, ADHD, uh, and also autism spectrum disorder, to name a few. Uh, exposure to chlorpyrifos has been shown to, associated with, to be associated with endocrine disruptor, and cancer, uh, lung cancer and rectal cancer. And finally, it also have been uh, associated with uh, decreased sperm concentration, DNA damage in sperm, and also reduced testosterone level. Okay, why was uh, corporate was selected for review in Australia? Uh, from the authority document, uh, National Registration Authority, uh, it says that uh, this document was produced in the year 2000. Uh, uh, it was it said that uh, copper is has very high toxicity to birds. It also a uh, water it has water pollution potential. And at that time, U.S. also restricted uh, because it imposed <coughs> because it reduced hazard. You U.S. restricted this pesticide. Uh, be, uh, in order to reduce hazard to fish, birds, and other wildlife. It also, it also has been demonstrated uh, to have potential for adverse effect in users. And finally, it has high potential chronic and model, moderate potential acute toxicity risk. Okay, I'll take you back to this uh, general process of chemical approval in a country. So right now, um, this pesticide has been approved like for 15 years ago and then you and because of the research that's been going on for this pesticide of the specifically in for the adverse effect of this pesticide uh the, this copy first has been under review since 1995 it's not complete yet uh so because of the review um uh there were some regulatory interim measures introduced during uh introduced uh to control the exposure among the public or even the occupational group for, uh, to this pesticide. Uh, there were some, uh, the, legal, the regulatory interim measures introduced, uh, some of them are administrative uh, control, such as the labels, and uh, some, uh, there were also changes in the food standard, the MRL level, the maximum residue level of the food. And, but uh, the, uh, and finally, there were also uh, the changes that really impacted the public at the time was that uh, corporate voice is no longer approved for use at home uh, for garden or domestic pest control for concentration more than 50 gram per liter. Okay, uh, the question to ask here is that how do we know that this chemical can cause harm to the environment? And what is the likelihood of us getting exposed to these chemicals? And what is the severity of the outcome of the exposure to this chemical? Um, this question assists on the part of a risk assessment of this chemical. Uh, scientists with health or psychology knowledge uh, actually uh, assist every step, including risk assessment, for a chemical to be approved in the company and as well as during the review of this chemical. Um, uh, my point here is that the science of health toxicology improves people's life. Uh, as for this specific chlorpyrifos, when it was first approved, uh, the fact that it was uh, a neurology, it, it, it has this health association that I mentioned before, uh, those facts were not known when it was first, first approved. Uh, and 30 years later, uh, the research uh, has shown that uh, the this copy first is not uh, really safe to use, so they have to do they have to propose some measures in order to reduce the risk. 
Um, so that's um, what I want to say is people with health and psychology uh, knowledge uh, improves people's life uh, by increasing public safety, uh, by the identif identification of potential health hazard from the exposure of the substance, by conducting risk assessment to ensure the risk and exposure to the chemical is minimized, and providing recommendation to reduce the risk of the resulting health effects. And people with knowledge of scientists with knowledge of health psychology also provide expertise to aid the decision making in public policy. Uh, with that, I uh, end my presentation. I hope you guys can get my 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 take, key takeaway message. Um, please come and join us as an alumni. I really think that it was a good course. Um, uh, and we also get exposure at Pusat Rachanagara. I mean, when when will we ever go there and investigate all the poison cases uh, uh, nationwide? Uh, we also have experience at the hospital in looking at uh, people, uh, people, ex uh, people intoxicated with all these toxicants. So it's a very interesting uh, uh, course. And I, I individually welcome you guys. And I'm sure uh, my colleague, all my colleagues in integrative medicine, uh, medicine cluster also welcome you guys. So yeah, that's my presentation. If you have any question, you may email me or maybe you may ask me or ask Charlene now for really the course. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Maisara. We can clearly see that health psychology actually has a big influence in our lives. If there's any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. So far. Okay. If not, we'll proceed to watch uh, sharing sessions from the alumni of this course about their experience in IPPT. So. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Atika Bintibadis and I am a graduate in Master of Science in Health Psychology from Advanced Medical and Dental Institute, USM Penang. Uh, so overall, I had a very warm and remarkable journey as a mixed mood postgraduate student back in Amdi uh, from 2018 to 2019. Uh, though location-wise, Amdi is a bit distant from the main campus, uh, but uh, the facilities that were provided were sufficiently good. The management has set a very supportive and engaging environment for our students and we had no problems uh, in obtaining resources for our studies and research. So um, course-wise, I registered in health toxicology uh, as I found the course content to be relevant and suited with my background. Uh, the course uh, was quite challenging for me, but in a good way. And um, uh, I had uh, obtained uh, abundant of new languages, which I found to be beneficial. Uh, for my uh, career and professional life. The lecturers back then was wonderfully approachable and uh, they are always there to help us out or whenever we were stuck with problems, especially with our dissertation project. And in the first semester, the course outlined uh, had focused on safety and environmental psychology, which uh, was something quite new for me. And we were also given a chance uh, to uh, go for an attachment in National Poison Center in which we were exposed to um, the management and research of uh, poison cases in Malaysia. So in the second semester, the course uh, were more focused on clinical toxicology, uh, which was deliberately exciting as uh, we were given a chance uh, to uh, do an attachment in a hospital and uh, work in close with the assigned clinician who uh, had enlightened us and taught us about the management of uh, poisoning and toxicology cases in the medical center. So all in all, apart from the classroom learning and tutorials, this course has set real, uh, good real life experience um, uh, by sending the students for attachment in the design areas. So all in all, I was happy and satisfied with my decision in enrolling as a student in AMD, and I would definitely recommend this course to anyone who is interested. Thank you so much.
For my case, as a toxicologist, the national process of the emergency departments of the hospitals and many other sectors of it. Considering myself as a registered pharmacist in my own time, it's only a one in degree and it takes you a master with the research project as well. And at the first part of the course, the university will make you that you have an interest. Which will help you to come up with a proposal for your project. So they will never leave you alone by the fish out of the water. So you will always find someone who will help you out and take in your line, uh, just kind of pointing you or uh, with how it all works. And there are a number of pilot trained professional researchers with their research proposals, and the university gives you the right. To uh, work with the right person who may offer you. Throughout this academic year, I have improved my academic skills through journal club sessions conducted on a regular basis. And besides expanding my scientific knowledge, I've improved skills like uh, communication skills, presentation skills, scientific writing, and uh, research skills. The Advanced Medical and Dental Institute. At the University of Science Malaysia, it's very dynamic, innovative, and creative atmosphere. It really lets you be who you want to be, and it really molds you in your specific path, which might be different from whatever one else is doing. So you can have your own path and get the full support from the school. My plans in the future is to apply for the PhD which is why I did my master's in the first place. And to start teaching a full time once I finish my studies. So the future looks bright and I think I am ready to be what I want it to be. Okay, thank you everyone. So are there any questions or do the speakers want to add anything else extra? I think, Doctor, you're muted, is it? Sorry. Sorry, okay. I forgot. Um, if there's anything from uh, other speakers or our from the team members, IMC, we have here today, Dr. Nur Aini, Dr. Nur Fatima, um, Dr. Nadira, Dr. Yusmaidi, Dr. Azalia. Maybe we can share our face to the students. To get to know us more. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Yus can say something. Dr. Yus Mehdi. Where, where are you? Dr. Nick. <laughs> we have here our prospect students today. Maybe we can share anything with the students. Dr. Yus, you want to say something? <laughs> this is an informal session actually. So uh, we welcome. Uh, if anything from the prospect students also, we welcome any questions or any comments for us. <laughs> if no, uh, so I just want to say we, we really welcome you to come here. If not for this program, you are welcome to do research also in IPPT. Uh, and under our supervision, uh, we are from Integrative Medicine Cluster. Again, uh, the last point that I want to highlight, this is a one-year master's program. So please grab your seat. Um, uh, 
in one year, you can get your master's degree and you can pursue your PhD or you can continue with your job. Okay. And uh, another point I forgot to tell you for this intake, um, we, uh, we start our class uh, by online because it's still, um, we are still in the middle, middle of COVID-19 pandemic. But um, as for now, they ask us to do online class until December, but um, we still, we will share further news after this if there's any, um, upper, they change the schedule or anything. Uh, so I guess Dr. Azman, is there anything else from you? Nothing? Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Azman is actually uh, our expert here and our seniors here. Okay. And Dr. Maisara, thank you very much. Uh, Miss Julia, thank you very much. She's our uh, master's uh, student in IPPT. Oh, sorry, PhD already, right? Yeah. It's converted to a PhD. Okay. Um, so any uh, last words from IMC's members? I can see Dr. Nick here. <laughs> Maybe you want to add anything? Dr. Nick Nishazni will be the next program coordinator. So maybe our prospect students will meet her after this. Okay. Um, so I guess if there's no questions, I think in the SB Live also no questions, right? No yeah. Question. In the chat box also no question. No questions. Mm -mm. Yeah. Everything is clear, I think. Yeah. <laughs> If, if you are shy to ask here, just email us. We are here to uh, answer your questions. And um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for staying with us. Thank you very much for, to the speakers. And thank you very much to the IMC teams. Uh, so maybe uh, we end this session uh, now. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. OK. Okay, if there's any further information, please look at the contacts chat. Okay. Okay. So, to, to.